Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience, the Tour Championship, 2020 Tour Championship at Eastlake. Early research, early preview, and we're going to just look at the course. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this because I don't even know who's going to be fully in the field yet. Uh, on FantasyNational.com, we actually loaded up the entire BMW field, not knowing in case you wanted to research specific players who could be bubbling on a Saturday into a Sunday. I'm doing this even before the leaders are off on a Saturday, because I had to get out of the house for a little bit, but I can't be gone too long. That's at least according to my wife. So please, smash the like button of the episode, leave your DraftKings handle in the comment section, give me your early lean for East Lake, boom, we're good to go. Also, for the audio version, rate the show five stars. Please scroll to the bottom of Apple Podcasts, click five stars, we're good to go. You want to leave a review? That would be terrific too, but the rating, that is currently what is important. Also, more important, subscribe to Mayo Media Network because we got tons of shows coming out. We're going to have the betting show on Monday with Feinberg. Tuesday and Wednesday, NFL is back. Long form win total shows. Previews for each team. They're fun. Uh, you're going to have some you're going to have a blast listening to those. Uh, you know, they're not like super informative in terms of great gambling advice, but hilarious to listen to and not completely misinformed just what tim has to say and we have even more stuff coming out later in the week i don't know if i'm going to do a DraftKings show or not this week i totally forget how DraftKings works for the tour championship to be perfectly honest with you there's also no listeners league this week for pga but there will be an nfl listeners league for week one i should have that link soon so be on the lookout for all of that stuff and what's going on at mayo media network might have some new shows coming your way just in time for football season as well, if that's something you're into. Also, FantasyNational.com, which I'm going to be using to preview the course. That's what really we're going to be looking at today, not so much the players. Uh, if you go to FantasyNational.com slash Mayo, you get 20% off, and we're back to regular golf next week. Silverado, then it's the U.S. Open. You know, the Masters isn't too far off either, so there's going to be plenty of golf for you to use Fantasy National for. And I pray to God, I mean, like I said, I, the leaders haven't even teed off yet, but if Rory wants to come first, Bubba wants to come second, I'm going to win a fuck ton of money. So if that happens, uh, maybe I won't even come in on Monday. I'll just be off on a resort island or something like that. But that would be terrific. So I assume that is not how it's going to end up playing out because it never works out that well for me. That's just what happens. I also want to thank everyone who's been sharing the shows, uh, spreading the word on Mayo Media Network. We set some lofty goals. We didn't hit them yet, but... I'm still super encouraged by the amount of subscribers, the amount of ratings. So please, every video, smash the like on it. That stuff really helps with the algorithm, uh, allows it to become discoverable all across YouTube so it shows up in the sidebar for everything. We're just trying to bring in so many new people, and we're hammering out content. I did a tennis show yesterday, for Christ's sake. So plenty of stuff coming out. Let's jump into the course, though. East Lake is going to be what we're talking about. We always see East Lake all the time. Like I said, we just kind of loaded everyone into the field, but let's just kind of take a look at what we should expect from East Lake. So, tournament conditions at the Tour Championship. It's a par 70. Uh, we've seen a lot of par 70s. The greens are generally going to play fast, lightning fast. It's a Donald Ross design, a lot like Detroit GC. The last time we saw a Donald Ross course, it was at the Wyndham. Um, and there's only going to be 30 players in the field. There's no cut, and it's a really wonky scoring system. So if we just kind of click over to PGA, we can see uh, what the current standings were coming into the week. Basically, the top 25-ish Top third, but top 20 is completely safe. Mark Leishman included, who's like 58,000 over par at the moment. Uh, but he is going to be safe to go into East Lake. Non Palmer should be fine too, along with Kisner. A few of these guys on the bubble could move in or out. Like Wolf's having a good week. Duncan's having a good week. And Hubbard and Nemer all kind of having a good week. So is Cantlay, obviously. So that puts like Smith and Champ and Streelman, who had a good Saturday. Uh, and Finau, if he somehow implodes, could end up finding himself on the outside looking in. So that's, what, again, why we loaded everyone into the field. Uh, back to the historic conditions. We're playing on Bermuda grass, firm greens, difficult to hit fairways. And it's it's not lengthy, lengthy, but, you know, between 72 and 7,400 yards. So if you're plugging your stuff into the mixed model, um, not just the regular model, the mixed conditions model, these are the settings that you probably want to go with. Generally pretty calm in terms of wind, sometimes moderate. So you're not dealing with just overall wind gusts uh, that could really cause a lot of problems. Uh, when we go to the breakdown, uh, you're going to see, let's see if we have any sort of showdown advantage oh good we have duplicate holes in here fine 
I'm 60. I'm going to get Moose on top of this one to see which one is which. Uh, let's see. Easiest holes. Rank. 19th easiest. 20th easiest. Always good to know. I'm going to get Moose to clear this one up. Uh, it must have been an old course that got put in or a duplicate. But we actually have the rounds for scoring. Let's go to top five to see what rates out really well here. Obviously, ball striking way more than short game just overall. It's usually pretty even because putting usually makes up for a lot of it. But as you can see, approach and ball striking. And this doesn't really play to any one particular skill set uh, in terms of length off the tee. Distance is always going to go a long way. But you know, we've seen guys like Ryan Moore and Jim Furyk and Bill Haas win at East Lake in the past, so I'm not going to be too bogged down by saying you got to go with driving distance. You make it up on the par fives, the par fours, the par threes don't really play a factor into the top five finishers. So it's four and five scoring, which we're going with, which is kind of funny because there's only two par fives and there are four par threes, and the rest of them are just going to fall into this range. So what are we looking at here? We have five lengthy ones, and we have five par fours between 450 and 500 yards, and we have another one over. So it's set up a, a lot. You know, the course isn't going to play anything. The, one of the reasons I'm, I don't want to go back and look at what's happening at Olympia Fields, a course which I completely whiffed on in terms of the difficulty that was going to happen uh, this week for the BMW Championship. I guess you know, I should have waited later in the week before making a bold proclamation. Sometimes you know the process was still right, even though the tournament is not really how I projected it out to be so hopefully my guys can still come through but I just don't know if there's going to be a lot of correlation between last week and this week obviously you ride the recent form we've seen that over and over um, here low driving accuracy percentage 62 percent tour average around 55 percent this week at East Lake. Uh, so you can play it out of the rough a little bit so I'm not going to be too bogged down by some of the guys I just don't put it in the water there's a ton of water around this course uh, so there's a few shorties but realistically we want to focus on those longer par fours who scores really well on those we'll jump over to the field and see who does that again the average driving distance way up this week too uh, from 182 per average to 191 on average for the field and that makes more sense because you know the bombers tend to be some of the best players on tour the top 30 players in the fedex cup standings those are generally the good players and they all mash the ball off the tee not everyone but most of them do that but again uh, at a ross design it is a classical style course that uh, you can kind of make up for a little bit with some accuracy. Or just some really good mid to long iron play from some of the guys. So let's take, la uh, sorry, that's the recent form. Let's look at the tournament history here. Guys that have been really good at the Tour Championship. Again, I, don't, I forget who's in and who's out. You know, Rory has won two of the past four years. And if he ends up winning the BMW Championship, people are all in on that. Xander has never finished worse than seventh. Uh, in the past, Justin Thomas has never finished worse than seventh. But again, you have the staggered scoring system. So guys like, let's say even Shoffley, if he just, he'll probably move up a little bit based on where he's at right now, but he's 11th in the standing. So he's going to be a bit back to actually start his round. Someone like the Todd father, I think is somewhat interesting. You're probably not going to see him uh, with any form whatsoever at this course because it's the tour championship and it's Brendan Tom. But this does seem like a course where he would play really well uh, if he can get the irons going. We know how well he putts and you'll see how many first timers could potentially be in the field at East Lake. Someone like Louie with a really good finish has never really had a good showing here. Uh, Patrick Reed has just been, you know, he's been progressively better. He was inside the top 10 last year, but he's someone who just historically does not do very well. Total strokes gained over the past five years. You'll see Kisner doesn't perform well because he either came you know, bottom five in the field two of those years. But top tens in the other two years, the most two recent years, that's worth noting as well. DJ either is really good in terms of having a top six or completely out of it at this tournament. I, I think you should just, honest to God, just really ride the form of what's going on. We could see Adam Scott back in to the Tour Championship. Uh, he has two top tens in the past five years and his only two starts tiger won the last time we see him i don't think we're going to be seeing tiger at east lake though unfortunately it'd be good for ratings uh hideki is really the one he gets himself in he can get up in those standings if he has a great finish or even wins at the bmw championship he's someone who's performed exceptionally well at east lake sort of under the radar besides like the very obvious ones the guys who've won this tournament it's funny to see that paul casey uh with four top fives and one top 11 and five top 11 finishes in the past five years where's Casey at on this list can he get himself in a 64th uh, he's gonna have to have himself quite a weekend at the BMW championship in order to get himself into the field so Rory Xander Justin Thomas and then bullet tooth Tony top five Tony Fino actually he's like top 10 Tony Fino at Eastlake uh, are the guys but Fino could be on the cut line too 
Somehow Danny Lee could get himself in. He has one appearance here and came in second. Danny Lee loves birdies. He loves this particular style of course. Unfortunately, he's not playing at that style of course right now, and he's kind of going up and down, as is everyone in the field. Henley is kind of interesting. One appearance in the past five years. Uh, same as Billy Horschel. Billy Horschel obviously won at this course and won the FedEx Cup six years ago. He's only played in the Tour Championship once in the past five years, has a second-place finish. That was in 2018 behind Tiger Woods. Russell Henley has one appearance that was in 2017 and came T3. Henley is looking like he might be able to get himself in uh, if he has a really high finish. He's 61st in the standings right now, but you know a top three finish, and he's still kind of lurking as I talk about it at the moment that he's someone who could potentially sneak himself in. Let's look long-term, go to the past 100 rounds, and I just really want to kind of hammer down on both approach, opportunities gained, and those key par four distances we can you can always adjust this too instead of going to all records you go to last three months and just look since the restart uh, maybe we'll do that in a second but we just look at approach thomas morikawa tiger probably not going to play casey probably not going to play uh cantley's going to have to continue to have a good week to get himself in then you have henley hovland matsuyama adam scott rory mcelroy woodland guys that you would expect to play well at this course leishman uh, if we do this since the restart i guarantee you he's not so high anymore but historically over the long form and maybe that's not what you want to look at because i even said that we probably want to go in on recent form uh that if we look at par four efficiency on those long 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 par Fours. We got Finau, Rom, Tiger, Dustin, Harris English, who's going to be there and not having a good week. It might be time to jump back on Harris English because you know he's not he's going to be very high in the standings, to be perfectly honest. He was sixth coming into the week, even with a bad finish at the BMW championship. It's unlikely that he drops anywhere like even outside the top ten, depending on what other people do. Sung Jay is super interesting as well, because he's guaranteed to be there. He's not going to be that far behind, uh, you know on the basis of having 30 people in this field. And this is the type of course, you know, it's short, it's water, it's Bermuda greens. Like this is his jam. Um, he's been playing so fucking poorly that, you know, you don't really want to go with Sung Jay whatsoever. But if there was ever a course where he can kind of get it back, him and Harris English uh, are just going to be devalued based on the quality of player that they are versus these high end names that those two plus Todd could be really worth a look. Uh, Cause we see just random people. If you get hot with the irons and you're a really good putter, those guys are, uh, then all of a sudden you could find yourself lurking up the leaderboard just a little bit because it doesn't just depend on driving distance this week. But again, as we look at it, Finau, Rom, Woods, Harris English, Mark Hubbard, Adam Scott, Patrick Reed, Carlos Ortiz, Taylor Gooch, and Bubba Watson are your top 10 players over their past 100 rounds from 400 to 500 yards. Since the restart, though, let's just take a look at this and just look at the past three months and see if that changes a little bit or if someone jibes with what they're long for. It's Tony Finau again. So Finau is great on these long par fours. You know, you wish he'd be better in other places as well, but you know, that's unfortunately not the case right now. Finau for Telly, DeChambeau, Hubbard. Hubbard could get himself in. He could be sneaky next week too at a place where you can make a lot of birdies. Uh, Dustin Johnson, Harris English, Adam Scott, Bubba Watson, Taylor Gooch, and Kevin Na. I'm going to talk myself into Harris English for next week, and that's going to go so horribly wrong because uh, you know how these things end up going. Adam Scott, though, if he can find his way in with a very top-end finish, kind of liking some of these guys this week. The Berg, you get him back on Bermuda. That's kind of his jam. Par 70s are his style, of course, too. If we take a closer look at the Berg. See how he's done at the Tour Championship. 15th, 15th, and 12th. Never been able to really putt, uh, especially in 2015, where he lost 7.2 strokes putting. But uh, I believe he is going to be in, isn't he? Let's see. Berger, yeah, he's fourth in the FedEx Cup standing, so he'll actually be somewhat close to the lead. I think there's going to be a lot of really interesting betting opportunities this week. I'm s kind of worried that they're going to cap it in a really awkward way but i don't even really know about that uh, as we kind of go down the list i'm curious to see what the odds are going to be jeff and i will discuss that but i remember last year they had the ones the overall winner based on you know who starts at minus 10 and who starts at like even in terms of the standings but they also offered an alternate bet where you just picked it like it was a normal tournament who just has the best score for the week, and those odds are more adjusted in line with what it should be. Someone like Harris English could win this week because one of the things that you end up seeing is that guys will try to protect a lead. At least that's what we saw last year. You know, If Justin Thomas is up by three right away, 
know, he might play a little bit differently, although he should not. There's just a different mentality when it comes down to it. And if you're someone like Harris English or like Mark Hubbard and you're just way back in the pack, you just might go birdie hunting uh, and say, you know what, fuck it. I might shoot plus 10. It doesn't really make a difference. I'm already super far behind. Or if you get hot for two rounds, all of a sudden you can get yourself back into it. And then the overall scoring, if you just play with less pressure because you're already out of it, that doesn't really get factored into the overall without the original standings tournament. But... Anyway, that's kind of what I'm looking at here uh, for East Lake. It's going to be very curious to see. If we just look at recent form coming in, too, uh, we can see the guys that are playing the best. English, Rom, Scheffler, Palmer, Dustin Johnson. This does not account for the BMW Championship. That will be updated on Monday. We'll try to get the scorecard fixed for you as well. That's going to do it on the Pat Mayo experience. Sorry about the quickie. There's just not much to say with so much left up in the air. So hopefully the bit of the course preview can help you out a little bit. I'm going to try to come back and do one of these before Wingfoot at the U.S. Open, despite the fact that football is still going on. So plenty of content coming out at Mayo Media Network right now. Football, UFC, golf is the primetime stuff that we're doing at the moment. There was tennis yesterday. I'm uploading some more vintage Cuss Corners. In case you've missed them, there's also an exclusive Cuss Corner audio feed. But those win total shows are going to be fucking dynamite, and you're going to want to tune into those. So please share the show around. Let's try to get as many subs as possible. That means we can do as many shows, more shows, than we're used to doing. Smash like for the episode. Give me your early lean in the description. Rate and review the audio podcast five stars and become a member at fantasynational.com today. Use fantasynational.com slash mail. Get yourself 20% off. Still plenty of golf monies to be won out there. No listeners league this week. Once again, in case you missed it the first time around. I'm Pat Mayo. Good luck next week and with the rest of the weekend. I'll see you next time. Experience. Experience!